Welcome everybody, Doug Skockel here with part two of how to make more three-point shots. You know, a question that I often ask players at our summer basketball camps is, how many of you shoot well uh, at home in the driveway, the backyard, or maybe down at the local playground, or, and even in some parts of practice? But when it gets to game time, you don't shoot as well. In other words, that, that practice success does not become game success. And a lot of hands go up, uh, you know, when I ask that question. Well, what you need to understand is that there's a two-part problem right here. And the first part is you have to practice at game speed. And a lot of times what happens, you go out to shoot in the driveway or the backyard, whatever it is, is that you might say, I'm going to go out and shoot for an hour, and that part's good. But then you pace yourself because you're going to be out there for an hour. Well, the problem is you get into a game situation where defensive intensity is picked up and you're running rapidly up and down the floor, and suddenly what happens in the game is that you're not shooting the same kind of shot that you shot in your practice situation. You're shooting a similar shot, but you're not shooting the same shot. So you have to practice at game speed. And our demonstrator is going to do that here today, and, and uh, he goes hard. You'll see how hard he goes when he shoots the ball. What you don't see is that when he gets tired, when his breathing becomes labored, he goes to the free throw line, and that's where he rests until his breathing returns to normal. Then he goes back and he goes and does you know, more game speed shots. Now, the other thing that happens is that day after day goes on, you start to get in better shape and you can go hard for longer periods of time before you have to do that rest stop. But that's a real key, being able to go at game speed. Now the second thing is, is that you have to practice game movements at game speed. You can't be sloppy, you've got to be precise in uh, at two areas. You've got to have really good, you know, your footwork has to be really good. You have to have proper footwork and you have to concentrate on proper receiving angles. Those two areas, proper footwork and proper receiving angles, are going to get a lot of attention in the video we have coming up. So let's go to the gym now and we'll take a look at, again, proper footwork and proper receiving angles. Before we move on, there are a couple of items I'd like to quickly address to help enhance the viewing of the basketball videos on our YouTube channel. The first one deals with annotations. I upload annotations uh, on the YouTube channel, and as a result, uh, if you pick up uh, the uh, videos from another source, and I know there are other sources out there that carry the videos, many times you will not have annotations on that. So you need to go uh, do a search up there. You can look at the top of this uh, uh, page I've got up here. Go to uh, do a search on Doug Scockle YouTube, and uh, then uh, you'll be able to click on the video that you want, and you'll be able to then see videos with annotations. I've also noticed you may be on the YouTube channel, but if you're on one of the smaller devices like your phone, uh, the annotations aren't picked up uh, on that as well. Now, the other area I want to talk to you about is if you have any video requests. Maybe there's a topic that you would like to see covered, and we haven't covered it yet. So uh, if, if that's the case, then uh, you can uh, email me at uh, DougScockleAOL.com. You can see it right there. And if there's anything about basketball, it doesn't have to be about the current video, uh, but if there's just anything about basketball you uh, have some questions about, you can call me, uh, area code 913-938-8130. Now let's continue with our video. Let's take a look at the two most common ways that we practice our three-point shooting. Okay, so we looked at the other end of the floor a moment ago, uh, one way that we practice threes with uh, a rebounder, it happened to be me in that case, throwing a ball straight out to a shooter. And if you're fortunate enough to have a gun, uh, then the gun can make those passes. Now, the, it, the gun is a great device, and you can get a lot of reps in a short period of time, you make lots of shots, it builds confidence. But you need to use it wisely, because you know what we've been doing here is what we would consider kick-out threes, in other words, the ball went into a an imaginary postman was kicked back out to the perimeter for a pretty easy straight on catch and shoot. But what about receiving passes from different angles? All right, so our demonstrator Tyler now is on the left wing and I'm in the point guard area right now. And Tyler, I want you to simulate as though you're getting a kick out pass from the gun right now. So here comes the pass, he catches it and goes into a shot. Well, that's a pretty easy straightforward way to shoot the basketball, but now we have a receiving angle because I've got the ball, so the pass is coming from this angle. That means instead of coming straight at his chest, it's going to come toward his uh, receiving, or excuse me, toward his shooting arm side, and then he's going to have to score up and shoot the ball. So let's take a look at that.
Tyler, come on up here real close to about, oh, right in here. I just want to show you real quickly, uh, Tyler's got the shooting brace on. We've been able to add, uh, give him a, a shooter seat we've talked about in our other videos. I want to mention something. There's two knobs on this if you get one, and you want to make sure that this an right angle right there is, is in line with, with the uh, joint right here, the elbow joint right here. Cause, uh, and, and usually you'll find this strap is going to be uh, above the bicep and uh, the middle strap, uh, let's turn around right here and let them see that this middle strap that comes around is going to go right through the crease. So I just, uh, as an aside, wanted to uh, show you that. Well, now we're looking at our demonstrator, Tyler, is on the right wing, and again, I'm at the point guard position, and so now, in the previous one, we were throwing the ball to his shooting hand side, now we're throwing the ball to his balance hand side, so this is different, all right, and so let's just take a look at what that's going to look like. All right, so... You can see that there's a difference right here, and here's something that you need to be aware of, is that sometimes you'll find kids uh, have a favorite spot on the floor, and then they have a spot on the floor that's not such a favorite spot, and the reason being that the footwork and, and the body turn, you know, the receiving angle is different on one side of the floor than the other. So if a player is, and we identified with Tyler here uh, yesterday that this is the side that he probably needs to spend a little bit more time on. Uh, so that he gets more comfortable with it. And that's the thing. If a kid has a, a spot that's not a favorite, that, uh, favorite spot, then work on it and uh, make it into a spot that he's comfortable from. All right, so there's three basic footwork patterns that a player could choose, and a, a lot of this is just a personal preference. Uh, the one that's uh, been in use for a number of years is uh, where we have an inside pivot foot, and that means that on that side of the floor it's going to be the right foot is going to plant first, and then the left foot comes around. But on the other side of the floor, it would be left foot, because it would be the inside foot, and then right foot swings around. So slow motion, Tyler, let's show an inside pivot. We're going to go right, left. Here it is, right, left and into a shot. You know uh, Tyler likes to use that forward drift we talked about in our other video right there. Okay, so let's just do a couple right now. Ready? And here's another one. So that's the right-left uh, footwork uh, with a, uh, an inside foot pivot. Well, the second footwork pattern that we're going to take a look at is what we call permanent pivot foot, and this is pretty popular in the game right now. What it means is, if you're a right-hand shooter, that left foot is, that left foot is going to uh, contact the ground first. And, and I do want to mention, uh, by the way, that make sure that, that foot gets down on the ground as or or just before you catch a pass. I see a lot of kids who catch the ball, and then they go left-right. Well, that's traveling, all right? So we've got to catch that ball. Uh, again, that, that left foot's got to get down uh, as we touch the ball or uh, the foot gets down and the, and the ball arrives just a split second afterwards. So we're going to take a permanent pivot foot, it's going to be the left foot, so it's going to be a one-two, left-right, just like that. Now with the ball, again, it's going to be a one-two, left-right. One more time real quick, here it comes, left-right, and that is permanent pivot foot. The third footwork pattern is what we would call a hop and catch. Or actually, it's, a, I guess, a glorified jump stop, catch and shoot the basketball. Showing up a lot of times now in the end with NBA shooters because it's a, it's a, it affords a really quick release. And, and uh, a quick release doesn't mean how fast you make your arm go to shoot. It's, it's that you get everything done quickly before you launch it. So in this case, you don't have a one-two count. You have one count and you're up and the ball's on its way. So let's show us a uh, hop and catch. And let's shoot a couple. Same thing with the hop and catch, Tyler. One more. So there's the hop and catch. Well, now that we understand that we need to practice threes where we're receiving the ball from different angles, how do we practice that? Well, there's three different ways. The first one I'm going to show you right here, we're using the gun, but instead of the gun making a direct pass to the shooter, the gun is going to pass to me at the top of the circle. I'll make that angle pass down to the wing for our shooter. So let's take a look at that.
All right, so the second situation we have, you're fortunate enough to have a tossback, which we do, and you can see it here in the background. If a player's by himself and nobody else there to uh, serve as a passer, we happen to have a tossback, and so what's going to happen is the gun will deliver uh, the ball to our shooter, who will, who will then make a pass to the tossback, catch that rebounded pass and from an angle, and then go ahead and make a shot. So let's take a look at that. Well done, Tyler. I mentioned that uh, there's three different ways to practice, uh, you know, receiving angles. And if you don't have a, you know, if you don't have a gun, and if you don't have a, a toss back, then it's going to require three people. You're going to have a rebounder, somebody standing, uh, you know, at the top of the circle or at the wing or you know wherever it's going to be to then deliver the angled pass to the shooter. All right. So what I want to do right now is we're going to take a look at the different receiving angles, and there's quite a few of them actually uh, that can uh, present itself to a shooter. One. All right, so the first angle we're going to take a look at here are corner threes. We're shooting the ball again, we're, we're uh, receiving a pass, throw it to the toss back, and then make and then take a shot. Okay, so the second angle that we're looking at is the ball's been passed out from the corner. And so this is again a different receiving angle. This is going to the balance hand side of the player. All right, so we've already shown you the point to wing pass. That would be number three. This is our fourth angle right here is the wing passing back out to the point guard. So our fifth angle is the ball going from the wing back up to our point. All right, so our sixth pass is going to be receiving from the point to the wing for that angle. Our seventh passing angle is receiving a pass out of the corner. Final uh, receiving angle is a pass that goes from the wing in, into the corner player, and so that's the eighth one right there. I should mention that we're working on an angle. I mentioned, for example, this last one here is a pass from the wing to the corner. We really don't set the toss back up at the wing. It's too long of a pass, so we get about half the distance, maybe a little bit closer uh, than halfway. Uh, uh, what we're working, uh, you know, to our shooter. What we're working on is the angle. And so I just want to make sure that you understand that if indeed you're working with a toss back. So we've been talking about uh, different receiving angles and a lot of these have been catch and shoot type shots but we need to address a couple of other areas and one is shooting the three pointer off the dribble. So let's take a look at that. So our final scenario is we've, got to, we've been working on catch and shoot. We also showed you one off the dribble, but another situation that arises where a player has received a pass on, on the wing, doesn't have a catch and shoot situation, maybe takes a jab step, backs the defender off and rises up and shoots, or they've just simply have backed off and he recognizes that, and so instead of a catch and shoot, there's kind of a pause or delay, and then the player just rises up to shoot. So let's take a look at that. Well, our three-point uh, video wouldn't be complete unless we talked about corner threes. And corner threes are kind of a different animal. The NCAA keeps stats. Uh, every, sc every school sends their stat sheet in after every game, and the, and the NCAA compiles all the floor locations where shots are made and missed. And what they've found over the years, and it's consistent every year, the two lowest percentage uh, three-point areas are the corner threes, with the right-hand side being the lowest side. So let's talk about why that is. Well, depth perception is the biggest reason, and in fact, really probably the only reason that, that players don't shoot as well from a, a corner. We're at the wing position right now, looking at the basket, and what we don't realize sometimes is that the backboard plays a role in helping us with depth perception. It gives us something to relate to. Now, I'm going to move around down here, get behind Tyler, and set up right here. So here's the problem. There is no backboard. I mean, there is, but you know, there's nothing to relate to. It's just a thin line right now. And so the basket from three-point land uh, uh, in the corner appears to just kind of hang out in the middle of nowhere. And so that becomes a real problem trying to relate uh, to the basket and backboard because you don't have that backboard uh, to help you out. So as I mentioned before, corner threes are uh, the lowest shooting percentage, and I think that's why with this depth perception thing. Now, a lot of you know that I favor the triangle offense, and all three of our perimeters 
are going to end up in the corner at one time or another. But to be able to shoot a corner three, at least for me, you have to qualify. And what I mean is, because because this is a different thing, there are some players that make uh, you know three pointers from the top of the circle, both wings just fine, and they don't do so well, uh, you know, from the corner. And so our players have to be able to routinely make four out of ten shots from here unguarded, at the, again at the college level. And if they can't do that, then they don't qualify to shoot corner threes. They can shoot threes from other parts of the floor, but they've got to be able to earn this. And so one of the ways to do that is to start out with, uh, Tyler, go into, so you're about, uh, walk on in there, so you're about uh, uh, just outside the lane and in line with the basket, okay? And in line with the basket, okay. So one of the ways uh, to do this is we'll start out with short range. We're not going to shoot anything, Tyler, but we would start out, start out a player on short range, uh, shots from this angle so they can work on uh, getting that depth perception figured out. Then we would uh, gradually step them back to get to mid-range and then eventually, hopefully, we can get them all the way back into the three-point range so that uh, they can handle this depth perception uh, situation. All right, so I hope you picked up some ideas that will help you as a coach or a player to, to further improve your three-point shooting. So until next time, this is Doug Scockle signing off.